and welcome to Side Character Quest. We are a one in one, the what a, oh boy. Okay, we are a one on one D&D podcast uh, that's part of the Scavengers Network. And this is a professional intro. Uh, with me today is my guest, uh, the guest player playing Alton, who is named, I gesture, Mallory. Mallory, hello, Mallory. Uh, hello, and my Ty. name is. Spoiler alert. <laughs> And my name is Ty, as Mallory has just said. Um, and your name is uh, Derek. Hi, Derek. Hi, Derek. How you doing, Derek? Thanks for listening to the show. Yeah, I really appreciate it. Uh, anyway, um, moving moving right on along. Uh, more, you know what? You know what? This show doesn't need any more introduction. You know who Alton is. You know who Mallory is. You know what's going on. If you don't know the answer to those questions, you should back up some episodes. You should back up some episodes, but we will give you a little recap. And uh, that little ooh, recap. Ooh, ooh. Yes, yes. Can I can I do the last time on Side Character Quest? Yeah, I'll add a little bit of reverb to that. It'll be nice and fun. Oh, thank you. So Alton uh, set up a... What, what, so la, um, on the last episode of Side Character Quest, Alton uh, met up with uh, a few different folks. What the heck did you do last time? I am having trouble remembering. Hey, Ty, I actually remember clearly for the first time exactly <laughs> what I did last episode. I've been I have so such obsessed. A clear... You've been so worried about what happens next. Yes, that I have like completely blocked out everything that happened last episode, except for the last like three minutes yes. of it. What, what the heck happened? I went to the church. I went to the church and eavesdropped on some people. Learned pretty much what I already knew from the letter, but a couple of new things. And then I went to go chill with Sim. And I feel like neither of us really gave any more information about... Because he... I feel like he talked a little bit about... um, Ah, shoot. Brother... Uh, Brother um, Amar. Yes, Amar. Yes. And kind of what happened with him, but didn't really like flat out tell me or maybe he did did he tell me about skeletons uh they told you that that amar ha- they they told you what amar had told everybody but they okay. seemed a little skeptical cool cool cool. that's okay yeah. yes that sounds right and then we went to the mayor's house work and i went to the mayor's house we caught up she was acting real sketchy about a shed and so alton snuck away after going back to the hotel with Wark to check out the shed, and when he got back, there was just a skeleton chained up. Yes, and uh, we're gonna hop in right there. Fade out. Fade in. On the edge of the Salton Sea, on St. Simone's Island, in a fairly well-to-do neighborhood, in a dark shed in the middle of the night, we see Alton, a middle-aged halfling man, standing next to an animated skeleton in robes. What do you do? This this skeleton is, is chained to the wall and to the ground. Everything that's in the shed has been sort of pushed over to one side. Uh, the home is... Well, that's all I'll say. Okay. I got some questions. Okay. Is the skeleton alive? Um... Like, is it moving? The skeleton is, like... You can see that it is holding itself upright. And, like, as you came in, it sort of pushed itself back. And then once it's, like... Once you stepped in fully, uh, it sort of hold itself upright. It, it's very clearly moving and holding itself at a posture that it wouldn't just naturally rest, if you know what I mean. Okay. And my other question is, is it securely restrained? Like, how how is it... Can I investigate, maybe, or whatever I need to do to see, like, what the situation with it is? Yeah, give me... So, so are you just trying to um, take a look at this from a safe distance? Yes, like I have okay. entered the door and closed it behind me so that if someone were to look out the window, they wouldn't see that mm-hmm. the door was just open. Yeah. But I am not going any further. I'm going to say, uh, roll me an investigation check. I 
to basically to see how how well restrained it is. Um, I was going to give you disadvantage because you're trying to look at it at these locks from a distance, but you're a locksmith, so I'm canceling that out. But I'm a locksmith, and I have a hooded lantern, so like I I, I that's fair. I can see. I'm just I can't imagine it's that big of a shed. No, no, it's pretty it's pretty small. You are you are standing maybe like three feet away from it, um, out of arm's reach, basically. Cool. I rolled a 17. Oh, heck yes. Um, looking at these locks, I see all. You, you see all. Um, you can see that these locks are uh, of, of fairly um, good construction. Uh, they're probably, um, you're, you're sort of guessing here, but it, it just makes, it makes sense. These look like they were probably something that was purchased from uh, Salty Sim at some point in the past. Uh, you feel fairly confident. It's, it's of course impossible to say until you get your hands on it, but you feel fairly confident that you could um, undo the locks. You also feel fairly confident that the that the chains are very well dug into the ground and attached to the shed itself. So without without some sort of like crowbar or lock pick kit, um, this person is stuck in place. OK, OK, OK. That was my biggest concern. And like the chains are relatively short, like this creature is not going to lunge at Alton. Yeah, the this this person does not um, this skeleton uh, does not have a lot of leeway, a lot of give on these chains. Because make no make no mistake, Alton is spooked. Yeah, this is a spooky thing that he has already encountered and did not enjoy the first time, but also suspicious. <laughs> As you are eyeing this, uh, this skeleton, it is also um, you. You notice it is watching you. Um, you can see its uh, its skull, like sort of turning, turning slightly to just sort of follow your eyes and and follow you as you move um, around it to look at either of its arms to see how it's uh, chained up. Okay. Yeah, it, but it doesn't. It doesn't seem to try to communicate in any way. Okay. Alton steps a little bit closer. It, uh, it pushes itself back up against the wall. Alton says, can you understand me? It pauses for a moment and then very slowly um, nods its head. Can you speak? You see its jaw move up and down. Uh, and then it pauses and you see its jaw moving again as it shakes its head. Okay, cool. Because I was trying to remember if Alton saw these like skeletons talking to him, each other in the underground city, and remembered that they like didn't make any noise, or I couldn't remember if he had seen that before. Uh, roll me a history check. History check on my old memory. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty much. I I don't know what else it would be in this situation. Ooh, that's a good. Okay, getting the good rolls out of the way in the beginning. Uh, nineteen. Oh, yeah. OK, this was going to be a little difficult, um, but you do remember uh, that the the skeletons that you had seen north of the city of Cirque in that underground city, um, they were uh, they they appeared to be talking to one another. You you couldn't hear them because they were too you assume you might have assumed they were too far away or you might have you know assumed that they weren't actually making noise who knows but they did appear to be having a conversation. Okay, okay, okay. Um, <laughs> I'm trying to like stay true to Alton here and I feel like Alton's bleeding heart is coming out. Um, <laughs> are you a prisoner? Uh. There's a moment of pause, and then uh, then this this figure starts nodding up and down, um, not not panicked, not in an excited way, just in a very like matter of fact way. Actually, roll me in. What is your passive insight? What does that mean? So I, I basically want to get an idea of like how well you're reading this this skeleton. Gotcha. Is that wisdom? That would be that would be wisdom, I believe. My wisdom. Score is 14. Is that what my passive wisdom would be? Like so it's a plus make, two? Yeah, plus two. So I guess your passive wisdom would be 12. Okay. Unless you have benefits to, or sorry, your passive insight would be 12. Unless you have benefits. I do have, um, I do have the, what is it? Oh God, it's been so long since I've played D&D &D and needed to know this. But when I color in the circle, that means I add my proficiency, right? Yes. 
So I guess. Uh, so my total plus would be plus five. Oh, okay. So you have pretty good insight. Um, so I'll say your your passive insight is fifteen. So Got yeah, I'm, I'm gonna go ahead. Yeah, I'll go ahead and, and give you some uh, emotional cues that you might have otherwise missed, um, even if you don't specifically ask for them. You know. So yeah. Um, but but that that was that was all there. Oh, okay. You can cool. continue with your questions. <laughs> you already gave them to me. I already gave them to you. I just was making sure I didn't give you too much in the future. Right, right, right. Um, okay, I'm trying to figure out. Oh. This is this is where there's gonna be some pauses, Ty. Yeah, don't um, don't even worry. I am so I I just don't have any idea what you're gonna do right now, and I'm so I'm so here for it. So take all the god dang time you need. Um, how long have you been here? Um, days, weeks. Does he react to anything? She, the 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 or figure, they, they um, the figure looks at you. Um, they they their jaw starts to move for a moment, and then they just it stops abruptly, almost as if they were like, "Okay, you can't understand me. You can't hear what I'm saying." So then they just start gesturing, and they gesture at, uh, they gesture at the ground, and then they gesture, ev- like they sort of wave their hands out in front of them, like everywhere. Like, which are you asking here? I say days and take a long pause. Uh, the figure pauses as well and then nods. There's a lot okay. of pausing here. Like, you guys are yeah. both feeling this out. Right, right, right. Um, Ty, is it relatively reasonable to believe that I would have a writing utensil with me? Uh, I feel like this is going to be an instance of us checking your inventory. Uh, okay. What what uh, would you, with your current background, have in your backpack? So there's nothing really within the burglar's pack, I feel like, that would give me... Like, I, I couldn't see anything really in there that would be helpful in this situation, but I do have artisan's tools. <sighs> and I imagine that that would, like, I don't know. It's, it's really your call, and I'll accept either answer and also what's around the shed maybe so looking around the shed you you don't see any writing utensils i'm going to give you uh if you want to convince me that you have like a pen and paper in your kit you can do that but i want you to tell me why you why you have that (laughs) i'm not going to challenge you as long as it's as long as you genuinely think it's reasonable no i I feel like it would be reasonable for Alton to always have pen and paper when he was going around Cirque because, like, he may need to, like, take orders for people or something. But, like, I don't, I honestly, truthfully, can't think of a reason why he would have pen and paper here right now. So okay. I'll, I, I honestly can't. Okay, that's fair. Like, why he would be like, I need to bring my paper with me tonight. That's fair. I imagine he even packed light in his burglar's kit, like, yeah. just his artisan's tools and his hood, hooded lantern. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. That's fine. We'll do this all in charades. Yeah, because we we've mentioned before that the artisan tools are your locksmithing tool, right, tools, right? Right. Um, or your your crafting tools, which I guess are s- different from your lock pick kit. Okay. Hmm. <laughs> I'm still gonna ask. Okay. Can you write? The figure looks at you and nods without any hesitation. In common, um, at that, they they pause again and then nod a little bit more slowly and hesitantly, but but they do nod. Do you know thieves can't? Uh, they shake their head no. Ah, darn! <laughs> I can't remember if we established what thieves can't was in this world, but I was hoping that maybe it was like hand signals and stuff, but uh. I can't remember. Um. Okay, so they can write, possibly in common. I have to believe that Wark would know. I mean, I know Halfling and Gnomish also, and I feel like Wark would know. What is, okay, let me, let me ask you this. What, like, just judging from the skeleton, I know it's probably hard to tell, but what species? kind of, like, what, yeah, what species do I, does Alton think this creature is? I'm going to give you a... I'm going to ask you to do a medicine check. Uh, I I think... I'm going to set this real low. 
um, because there's not a whole lot of options, you know, like it, right, it, it, right, like, right, right. it might be a little difficult to tell the difference between a gnome and a halfling, but the difference between a gnome and a human is real easy. 13? You can tell that they are not a gnome, halfling, or dwarf. So they are, okay. it, it, they're either a human, a half-elf, or an elf. Okay. That's, that's the only, only options that make sense to you. Okay. They're definitely not a dragonborn. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool, cool, cool. And there, you said there are no windows in this shed, right? No. No windows. Alton's going to go peek out the door. Okay. Do I see any kind of movement, light, or anything within the manor, is what I'm going to call it, because that's what I imagine it in my head. Uh, give me a perception check. For the record, it's uh, while you roll that, it's a little bit sm- more humble than a manor. Okay. Good for her. Yeah. Perception. Oh, hella high. 23. Oh, yeah. Uh, you looking out into the night, um, you can tell that it is uh, dark as heck out there. Um, you don't see any lights. Um, there's uh, no lights on inside the house. You can't hear any movement coming from inside the house. Um, listening outside, you can just hear the sounds of like insects and far off in the distance, you can hear the waves. You can probably hear some bats swooping up, uh, chirping uh, through the night air, that sort of thing. But there's no sign of people out there. Okay. I, which I assume is what you're looking for. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And there's no like care, street lights. I don't lights. care about the bats. I want to know if <laughs> the mayor is out yeah. and about or awake. What if the mayor's a bat? Have you considered that? I haven't considered that. I'm so sorry, Ty. Can I write a new children's book called What If the Mayor's a Bat? Have you considered that? <laughs> you should. I will. That's my next you goal. Should. Have you read the children's book? Have you seen my hat? I have seen I have read that children's book. It's a good children's book. It's delightful. Have you read the children's book Stella Luna? Yes, that was my favorite oh, book when I was a was kid. I still have it. Book. Oh, it's so good. I love it. Hey listeners. Yes. Stella Luna is a good book. It's a very good book. The reason why fruit bats are my favorite bat or favorite animal. I was gonna say, it's a reason why I love bats. I don't know yeah. if bats are my favorite animal, but I do love bats. They're very cute. Fruit bats are my favorite animal. Yeah, they're very cute. Very, very cute. I feel like I didn't know that about you, Ty. You learn something new that. every day. Yes. Yeah. All right. Uh, I feel like my <laughs> my favorite. I feel like my favorite animal is wolves because of Balto. Between the two of us, we're basically Dracula. Is what I'm yes. learning here. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Mm-hmm. If vampires were a thing, I'd be a vampire in a heartbeat. <laughs> I would be uh, like running around the streets like someone bite me <laughs> uh, you'd, you'd make a good addition to what we do in the shadows uh, oh boy anyway um, you were saying so I'm going to move closer to um, this creature and see like like real close like close enough to touch how do they respond. Um, are you moving forward slowly? Like, how are you approaching? Yes, yes. I'm not like running at them. I'm, I'm, I'm moving forward like slowly and non-threateningly. Just honestly, just trying to feel out how this creature is going to respond. Gotcha. Uh, roll me a, a charisma check here, real quick. I, I feel like, uh, like what I. <laughs> this sounds very much like animal handling, but for a person. Right. <laughs> You're basically just trying to get them not to run away and not to bite you. Right, like I'm honestly, because I feel like Alton is, Alton considers this thing to be like a living creature, but also yeah. does not know, like it could be dangerous, like they could be dangerous still, and just. It is undead, like you're like, yeah. what, like I don't know what the hell this is. Yeah, I feel like, yeah, Alton has no experience with these things, but to this point, he has had no reason to be frightened or intimidated by it or by the other ones that he saw. Yeah. Sorry, what was I rolling? <laughs> uh, just a straight up charisma check, unless you have something. Cool. That I was you... gonna say I knew what I rolled. I just couldn't remember what I needed to add to it. Yeah. Um, charisma uh, fourteen. Uh, I'm looking at the back of Mallory's um, character sheet, and it, I, all I could read was uh, Daniel in quotes, which I just I just <laughs> like that that's back there. Yes. I, don't I, have... I didn't want to ever forget the names, so I always write down the names. Yeah. What was the the name there? Um, or the, the role there? 14, I think. Yes. Listeners, if it wasn't a 14, don't tell Ty. <laughs> uh, 
yeah, so uh, you approach and you you're approaching slowly. Hands are up, and the the figure you almost they almost look like they're tensing up a little bit. It's kind of hard to tell because you know no skin or bones or or well no skin or muscles or anything. I, was gonna say, I um, hope there's bones. I hope there's bones. It's just a robe. Uh, but but they stay there and and just sort of let you approach. They don't jerk away or anything or try to attack you. Okay. Is there a way? <laughs> yeah, I done spooked you. The nervous laugh is coming out. <laughs> is there a way that Alton sees that he could remove this creature from the wall? Yeah. But still have them like a little bit restrained you know what i'm saying like is it yeah. like handcuffs and then those handcuffs are then attached to the wall okay so you you want to so they have shackles on them and you want to know if you can remove the the shackles are on them and on the wall you want to know if you can remove them from the wall but leave them on them yes gotcha um so so you you can unlock a lock very easy correct so you could easily undo the shackles correct um, to to undo the uh, to undo the the connection from the wall, you would need something to like pry it off, or maybe to like break the wall itself. You you could do it. It would just require it would require a tool and or strength check or something. How about a crowbar? It, a crowbar would do it. Cool. Cause there's no crowbar in the shed unless you brought one. I got one in a burglar's pack. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You've uh, you've got it. Okay, because let me explain, I guess, to you, so that you know, I'm trying. Okay, so Alton wants to know what's going on. Yeah. More than anything in the world, he just wants to know what's going on. I feel like it's his belief that if he gets this creature to somewhere where they can write, and also where that where like work can help him with this, he will learn more. Yeah. But. I feel like he's not so dumb as to think that the mayor wouldn't immediately suspect him of this because they were mm. just here. Yeah. So he is trying to make it look like this creature has pried itself from the wall. That's very smart. And not just someone has come in and unlocked the locks. Gotcha. Gotcha. Um, that's that's very smart. Uh, and also, uh, I'll just point out, this skeleton creature has no reason to know that you could unlock the locks. Right. You know? So, so like, it's not like you were, like, they will be mad at you for leaving them shackled, you know? Yeah, and I mean, like, I'm sorry. Like, do you want to stay in the shed? <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yeah, uh, go ahead and, are, are you going to try to just pry it off of the wall? Yeah, I'm going to give it my right. best shot. Strength is not Alton's strong suit. Haha. <laughs> I'm going to say you have uh, advantage here. Cool. Um, because you have spare time to do this. Um, and also this is connected up to like it is it is like connected pretty well, but it is on like a wooden shed. Cool. It's not like it's it's bored into a stone wall or something. OK, cool. And um, because this creature cannot speak, I imagine that Alton is going to be completely upfront with it, like and just be like, hey, I want to help you. I'm going to pry this off the wall please do not run if you run someone else is just going to capture you and you'll probably end up in a worse spot like let me get you to someone that can hopefully communicate with you better than I can will you run uh they shake their head no just no hesitation they shake their head no they will not run okay cool Alton's gonna crowbar this shit nice give me a second Ooh, that was a good roll. Ooh, that was a bad roll. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go with the first one. And my strength is minus one, but that's still a 17. Oh, boy. I set it to, you want to know? 16? 17. Ooh. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> uh, gotcha. Um, yeah, so you, uh, you go up to the first spot on the wall and are trying to pry it off, and it takes you a... a it takes you a while to get it off, but but eventually you you do pop that first one off. And that's good because, hey, Ty, I'm trying to be so messy with it. Like someone has ripped it off, like yeah, not yeah. just that there's a tool involved, like that this creature has ripped it out of the wall. 
and uh with that um with that first one like when you're you're trying to get it for a while a lot of the wood like splinters on that first one um it really just you're, you're chipping away on the sort of edge of it while you're trying to get that crowbar like underneath so that you can pry it off but eventually you do and uh, eventually once again you get it on the second side and the second one comes off a lot more also messily but but relatively easily and um once you do those this person uh, is able to stand up the shackles that are or sorry the chains that are connecting their shackles to the ground to the spikes that are in the ground um once you've taken off the ones on the wall uh they start helping you press down on the crowbar to sort of pry the ones that are in the ground up and out and uh and they help you get those ones out and um yeah they're able to get up uh, and they stand up in front of you, full height, so probably about twice your height, uh, maybe a little less than that. Um, they're not huge as far as humans go, but, it, you know, it's dark. It's hard to tell. Humans or elves. I imagine when they, right, I imagine when they stand up, Alton takes a step back and just says, we cool? Uh, there's a, a momentary pause, um, and then the figure looks towards the wall, which you know on the other side of that is the house of Mayor Chambers. And then she, and then the the figure looks back towards you and nods. Okay. What is just really quickly? Alton's gonna do a quick glance around this shed. What's in this shed? Like, you can be general, but like, what's what's in here? Uh, yeah. So there is a um sort of a work desk. Um, there are some clay pots. Uh, there's some a bag of fertilizer. Um, there's a a, a, a trowel. And some various other things. If there, there, there's nothing that looks like an obvious weapon. Okay. There's Is, nothing. Oh, go ahead. Oh, I was just gonna say, how was was this door padlocked from the outside? How is it locked? Uh, fuck. Did I say it was locked? I don't remember. I don't remember if you did either, but I imagine that you would lock a shed that you were keeping a skeleton in. But I didn't know, like, or maybe, maybe, maybe it's just a regular knob. Yeah, I think it I think it might have been like locked, but not with a special lock. OK, um, I, I don't I don't quite remember listeners. Uh, I think that if anything, it was a regular lock. It was nothing like fancy. OK, cool. I'm mainly asking to see if like it would be suspicious that this creature is able to act like could he could the creature if they had escaped the wall, unlock it from the inside and leave. Yes. Great. They they could have unlocked it from the inside. Perfect. That would have been been very easy. Yeah. I was trying to weave a story if I needed to, but if they could just easily unlock the door, then I'm going to or Alton, I'm not there. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Alton is going to. What is the creature like? Is it just like what's it wearing? Is it just naked? Is <laughs> yeah. it naked? Is it naked? No. Um. It is not naked. It is wearing um. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell the the color of of the the clothes, but um, it is wearing these very like tattered looking uh, robes, uh, maybe. But but yeah, it's it is wearing clothes. It's it's wearing um, shoes, and it, it is it is in full attire. Uh, but this attire looks very old. Do they have a hood? Yes, they do have a hood. Okay, I turn to them and say, "Hey, put your hood up." They are like, you turn and they're already putting it up. Cool. And I, I turn back and I say, please, please just follow me. Trust me for a little bit longer. They give one sharp nod. Cool. And Ty, I'm going to start making my way back to the the hotel, I guess. (laughs) All right. Uh, I'm not going to just barge into the hotel, but I'm going into that general area. Nice. So you guys, um, you open up the the shed, uh, perhaps leave it pretty wide open. Um, like it has been you maybe like burst open. I don't know. Yeah, I'm trying to like make a scene here. So like, I guess like footprints going in one direction, but then we like backtrack and go in the other direction, you know? Yeah, like, gotcha, gotcha. Alton's a thief. He's smart. Yeah, totally. Um, so, so you guys, uh, you head out into the night and start heading back towards, uh, towards town and towards the hotel. And, uh, with that, I think we're going to take a quick break. And hey, Ty, how about we hear from another show on the Scavengers Network? 
PodCube, podcasts from the past delivered to the future. With PodCube's pseudo-linear 4D adiabatic qubit streaming technology, you can select any point in history and record it for personal gain. What was the group dynamic with Australopithecus? What brand of cigarettes did the Spanish Inquisition smoke? Was Leonardo da Vinci a pants guy? Or a shorts guy? You can discover with PodCube. PodCube's patented time-agnostic articulated Newton mechanics allow for high-definition streaming of 8 petabyte per second audio from any time or place in space or time or place. Our Galileo pod delivery system is unintrusive and designed to blend in, no matter when or where it goes, to deliver your pod cube. Listen for yourself to the flagship pod cube podcast, Alabaster's Haberdashery, recorded on location in 1880. The finest bespoke headwear, highest quality garments, and most humble haberdashery in the heart of beautiful Prumpleshire, UK. Search pod cube, all one word, in your podcast app or visit poweredbypodcube.com. Pod cube, the future is yesterday. Yeah, I feel like I would enjoy Hallmark movies in the in the with a bunch of friends watching them in a marathon and not really paying attention since. Um, you want to get right back back into the show? Yeah, I do. All right. I thought of a better plan, but I'm going to wait and see how you introduce where our situation is and then I'll decide if I want to. Yeah, I mean, I'm happy to. Um, so I, I was trying to I was thinking about asking you, like, would you rather start right outside of the hotel or would you rather start like on Main Street, like before like or, or near Main Street approaching the, the downtown area? I imagine that Alton is not going to walk them up Main Street like, yes, I'm trying to keep to the outskirts and get like back to the hotel. Were we like, is it like multiple multiple stories or? The, the hotel is is flat. Um, OK, cool. So I could like reasonably get back to the hotel on the outside and get to my window of my room. Yes, I, I feel like I feel like we're uh, I feel like I will have like faded in at some point during this conversation uh, because I feel like this this sort of setup will be important for listeners. So we're so in case we're not there yet. Um, hey, we're back in the show. Welcome back, guys. I thought um, we were already back in the show. I think I, I don't think that we introduced it. I don't think we reintroduced it back into the thing. But anyway, here we are. Um, <laughs> so so just so you have uh, everybody has an idea of how this town is laid out in my mind, uh, there is a, a sort of dock like bridge that uh, that goes from the mainland through some marshes to St. Simone's. And then there is a main road um, that's that's, you know, got trees overgrowing it and, and stuff that cuts from that main bridge through the island and then straight into Main Street, um, that sort of area. OK, Main Street starts maybe like a football field away from the dunes of the beach. And then if you go left on the end of Main Street, um, then there is a, a smaller street that sort of follows along the coast. So it's sort of an L shape. And then anything else Everything everywhere else is basically like these wooded areas uh, that occasionally you'll find like a, a small neighborhood or like a small road going to like an individual house or something like that. OK, that's that's the basic idea. So if you are approaching that L from the inside of the, the L, I guess uh, you're you've got like woods and stuff up until you get to the back of the buildings. OK, cool. Yeah, I. <sighs> I would like does that make sense. Okay. Yes, it does. Okay. And I have a question. So I would like to get as close as possible, but I don't want to be walking on a street. So okay. is it okay? If I could get to the hotel without walking on any of like a main street, then that's cool. If not, that's fine also. And I will play off that scenario but i just i'm not sure i'm trying to get as close as possible how close can i get uh you before can get... i would have to like be in a pretty open area um so there aren't any um you could probably approach the building uh you could probably approach this this building from uh the hotel section of uh lulu's um uh, Salt and CB company. You could probably approach that 
um, from the back, so through the woods, uh, you could you could sort of hit it as a, and therefore avoid all of the streets, all of the like two streets. Cool. But um, that being said, there are windows on the back of that building, um, like in each person's hotel room. So if if someone was awake at midnight or however late it is, um, then they could potentially see you. It's not like this is a surefire. You 1000 percent are not going to be seen by anybody. I got you. That's what I figured. Just so you know what you're looking into. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I kind of assumed. I imagine they're going to get right up to that tree line Mm -hmm. and Alton is going to turn to this creature and say I don't want to hurt you I would like to help you my friend would like to help you I hope (laughs) at the very least he's not dangerous will you please stay here while I go get him Okay, so I'm going to roll. So I know I know that you genuinely want to do this. Yes. So I'm going to have this person roll a wisdom check, and I'm going to have you roll a persuasion check. Cool. Ooh, good thing I got that proficiency bonus, because that was not a great roll. 15. Okay. They, uh, they nod their head. Okay. And then Alton t- starts to walk away and then turns back and goes... Because you know you're a skeleton, right? And if you just try to run, someone's going to hurt you because they're not going to understand. Please don't run. They, um, you see them shift their weight on their feet and then they sort of their shoulders slump a little bit and then they nod their head. Okay, cool. I will be right back. You can watch because I imagine we're at the, the edge of the forest, right? Mm-hmm. You can watch me. I'm I'm just going to go right up to that window, get my friend, and come right back. Okay. Or they nod their head. And I guess he's gonna go <laughs> and hope that the skeleton monster doesn't escape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Um, and I'm just gonna go and tap loudly on Wark's window. Not the window where Danny is, but Wark's window. Gotcha. Uh, I don't think you have to roll anything for this. Um, let me roll a perception just to see how long it takes work to notice you. Cool. <laughs> Is work passed the fuck out? They got a two. Is he just like drunk? Uh, you don't know what their situation is, uh, but they, I, I was really you know doing what? that. After a certain amount of time, Alton's just going to open the damn window. Was, He's a okay, locksmith. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He does not notice you like knocking at all. He is asleep uh, and, and does with a three while asleep does not, or sorry, a two um, <laughs> does not notice you at all. Cool. I'm going to open the window. But yeah, it, it slides open. There's no lock on it or anything. Cool. I'm going to go and like shake him awake. Uh, um, Dad, oh, Alton, what what are you doing in here? Work. I I need you to come with me right now, and trust me. Oh uh, well, um, you've I've trusted you so far. Um, give me a, a moment, I guess. Uh, one one is it. Is it going to be dangerous? It's not going to be dangerous. It is going to be scary. Uh, when you say he, it's not going to be dangerous, he starts to get up. And then when you say um, it's going to be scary, he uh, s- sort of leans back down, reaches under his pillow and pulls out these two gloves and slides them on. And uh, then he gets up. Cool. While he's getting up and adjusted and all this stuff, Alton is looking around for like pen and paper. I'm assuming there's going to be some in this hotel room, especially yeah. if it's Work's hotel room. Yeah, the, looking around the uh, the room, you see a, a small writing desk, and on that writing desk, um, you see uh, a you see several reams of paper. Um, you see a quill uh, and a uh, and a little inkwell, um, and it's and lots and lots of like notes and different geometric designs and stuff. Cool. Uh, is Work just gonna follow me out the window blindly? Uh, you look over and see Wark um, just sort of uh, slipping on a um, he was wearing like a nightgown kind of thing Mm -hmm. Um, and you see him like pulling on some 
uh, pajama pants and like uh, tying up his like uh, his nightgown shirt um, to be more like a like a tunic kind of deal. Mm -hmm. And then you see him sort of running his hands through his uh, his beard. Um, Why is the window open? It's difficult to explain. It'd be easier to just show you. Are you going to ask me to hop out the window? Yes. Okay. I should have known. There. Okay. You know how. Okay, work. (laughs) Oh, the nervous giggles. Don't don't fill me with confidence. I have found someone that needs our help. And it's outside of my area of expertise. And I'm hoping that you may be able to help more. Okay. But I will admit that it's going to be a bit spooky. But I'm almost certain it's not dangerous. They are not dangerous. They just need help. You know, Alton, for a person whose job is to to work with people, I mean, to, to sell yourself... You're really not great at instilling confidence. (laughs) Well, you know, Wark, right now I don't have a ton of confidence, but I can guarantee that between the two of us, we're not in danger. Uh, He um, looks at you and (sighs) yawns really loud and then claps your uh, clap his, his hand against your hand for one of those like hand on wrist handshakes. And gives it a quick pump and says, I'm following right behind you. Thank you, Wark. And uh, and if you hop out the window, he uh, hops out after you. Cool. Wark is such a bro. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I'm going to hop out the window and head over to the place where there is hopefully still a skeleton. You hop out and uh, you go over to the... To the trees, um, you see a hooded figure, um, and a- as you are approaching, and as this this figure becomes visible in the shadows, um, you sense Wark sort of like his steps. He does a little stutter step as he's like, "Oh, is this bo- is this normal?" And then he notices you still walking, and he continues forward. Yeah, as you guys approach, you stop maybe five, six feet away from this other figure. And Wark looks down at you and then up at the figure. Well, um, Alton, uh, you're going to introduce me to your friend. Yes. Wark, I am unable. Actually, you know what? I am going to turn to the skeleton creature first and say, this is my friend Wark. He is more knowledgeable about pretty much everything than I am, and I'm hoping that he can help you. I've brought paper. Can you tell us your name? And I hand the pen and paper or whatever and paper to the creature. Uh, so as you hand it over to them, they, they reach out to grab it and in the moonlight their bones uh, glow against not not literally glow, but they're yes. they're. <laughs> Wark sees bones in the moonlight. And war, you hear Wark next. You go. Ah! Wark Alton when I when he sees Wark panic as he knew that he would, but didn't know how to explain it before uh, this moment. He, he yelled. Turns, he did not yeah. like, but but he hasn't run away or anything. Cool, Wark. I don't believe them to be dangerous. They were a prisoner, and have done. Nothing to suggest to me that they are trying to harm me, but they cannot speak. So I'm hoping that either you can help them speak or we will be able to understand the writing. And I hand over the paper. Uh, So, yeah, one second. I'm going to look. I I made a stat block a while back for Wark. Um, I'm going to pull it up and see if he has any spells or abilities that will specifically aid in this situation. Cool. One second. Also, I think I also have a stat block for this particular character. The is this a uh, named character? I have specifically held off on giving them a name until it's needed. Uh, until right now. Uh, no, not until. Assuming, 
assuming that they can write a language that we can understand. That's true. Um, all right, I have pulled up my stat block for Wark. Wark, dwarven erethmancer. I think it would be really funny if he just didn't have any helpful spells and just like that Alton has just full confidence that he will <laughs> because um, Wark knows magic and Alton admires people that know magic so much just to think that they are just all powerful beings. And then Wark's just like, whoa, I don't know. <laughs> um, so he he looks, uh, Wark is like looking between you and this this creature I don't know what you really expected from me. I I don't listen. I know you don't know a lot about m- magic, but or wait, what? Uh, sorry, actually, let me step back because I think in canon, I'm not sure if I know what you're expecting of me. What do you? What, did you did you ask him what uh to to allow them to speak? Did you tell him that the skeleton couldn't speak? I. I think I might have, but if not, okay. I imagine that I would say that the um, that the skeleton's unable to, or that they are unable to communicate. I don't think that Alton's expecting them to magically expecting work to magically solve this problem, but I'm I think he's expecting work to at least be able to see, like, or to know more of why, like, because Alton doesn't understand why there's a living skeleton. Yeah. Like, Wark would at least hopefully know what kind of magic could do this. Yes. So you've you've handed over this um, sheet of paper, this sheet of parchment, and uh, this quill and inkwell over to this um, skeleton, and they're just sort of, like, looking at you guys and holding this stuff. And as as this is happening, and, and you look sort of at, at Wark um, after explaining to him that this, this creature can't talk, and he, he says, well, I... I don't have anything in my toolkit at, at the moment that can give something speech, but, um, well, uh, he, he, uh, he pulls out his, his hands and he reaches out with, um, his hand, uh, you, you notice it's the one that's missing a finger, um, and he touches one of the symbols on his glove and a soft, uh, pale light, um, starts glowing from his palm and he holds that out for the uh, uh, over the parchment and says, "Please, um, could you tell us your name?" Alton is watching in wonder, as if Wark <laughs> has just like conjured the gods, <laughs> like just like uh... oh, very cool. Just so amazed. <laughs> it's like he doesn't have a hooded lantern or anything. Yeah. Yeah. Give me a letter. L. Um, give me a different letter. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fine. I've already um, used the L's. <laughs> M. Uh, she writes out um, on the uh, on the paper. You notice that that her handwriting is legible to you, but it, it looks like it's a very old script. Uh, like it, it looks very old fashioned to you, to your eye. And she writes out the letters M. O R E E N. Alton looks at the paper and looks back up and says, Maureen? Uh, the figure looks at you and nods. He holds out a hand and says, Maureen, I'm Alton. It's nice to meet you. The figure um, reaches over to you, uh, like sets down, sets down the quill that was in their, their right hand and then reaches out and uh, shakes your hand uh, with the metal of their shackles sort of rattling against the bone on their wrist, and they, they nod their head towards you. I imagine at this point that Alton remembers that they are still shackled. <laughs> 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 and take... Oh, I hesitated for a second there, but Alton, at this point, I feel like would take the shackles off of their wrists. So you sort of do uh, you take out like a uh, your your kit and just sort of unlock it? Yeah. Cool. Um, so you do that, and uh, and the figure looks surprised when you you start when you sort of like reach for the lock and, and pull out your your kit, but they very quickly you know settle down and, and stick out their hands and make it very easy for you, and don't seem to be making a big deal out of it. Cool. 
Uh, and when you once you've removed the shackles, they let them fall to the ground and they sort of kick them and then uh, rub at their wrist. Cool. I'm going to grab those shackles and put them in my bag. Ooh. Anything to, I don't want not to use for oh, later, oh, oh, for evidence, but just but so that they're not laying here outside of the hotel where I am staying. And I'm going to say that I was going to be like, I, I don't want anyone to find these here. And I pick them up and throw them in my bag. As you, you say that, saying that you don't want anyone to find them in here, Maureen, uh, she picks up, she picks up the pa- pen and paper and she writes out the phrase, do you know who had captured me or who captured me? Do you know the person who captured me? Probably how they phrase it. Okay. Um, I know the person whose house you were at. Is that the person who captured you? Uh, they nod their head. Then yes. And they nod their head a little bit more slowly. And then they, they write another message and, uh, and it says, are you their enemy? I imagine you you give the same look. Alton gives the same look yeah. that you just gave, which was sort of looking off to the side and very like thoughtful. Like, I did, am I? Like, what what is this? I have no reason to be their enemy. You see, Maureen. But they are not my ally. You see, Maureen tense up a little bit, but then relax a little bit when you finish that sentence. Do you know why you were captured? Uh, they, they write onto the paper, um, not sure. And then they gesture at their hand and their face. Yeah, that um, was going to be my next question. And sort of have like you, shrug questioningly. Have, <laughs> I imagine that Alton's hoping that Wark will step in at any moment, but Alton is just going to bumble through this. Wark is, is, is enraptured in this. Have you always been a Skeleton? They sort of slump a little bit. Uh, and I want you... Um, they shake their head. They shake their head. What made you this way? Or who? They pause for a long time. Um, and they point again at the phrase, not sure. But then they um, start to write out a little bit. Write Hmm. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> Ooh. Roll me Ty, a persuasion. Tell me all the secrets of this world. Roll me a persuasion. Okay. Because I'm not sure how much they would, like, I... You're not sure how much they would trust their savior? <laughs> <laughs> um, I know how much they know. Roll me a persuasion. I, 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 I was thinking about giving you advantage, but I think in this situation after they've just been captured for who knows how long, I feel like they're very untrusting. And like the fact that they're talking to you at all. That's fair. Like, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. Ty persuasion is one of my good skills. Let's do this. Okay. Could have been better, but I add a lot. So let's see. I'm so fucking charismatic. 16, 16. (laughs) Yeah. So you, you, you see them pause for a long time. What, remind me of exactly the question you asked. I don't remember the exact question I asked, Ty. I, okay. <laughs> what was the I'm gist of it? I'm bas- yes, I'm basically trying to figure out. Oh, how, how she became that way? Yes, how okay. this person has become a skeleton, if they have not always been this way. They write, she wanted to know that too, and then pauses to see your reaction. I... I turn to Wark. Yeah. And ask Wark if he knows what could have done this to a person. He shrugs and says, I don't study necromancy. It's not exactly my strong suit. I have okay, a broad Wark, education. I'm sorry. What'd, what'd you say? You, you, I was going to say, okay, Wark, I'm sorry. You know more than I do. <laughs> do you know how we can help you? no longer be a skeleton with that uh with that she pauses from like she starts to vigorously nod you know like very quick and then she sort of pauses a little bit like maybe i do i want to say this 
And then she nods again more slowly, picks up the, the pen and the paper and starts writing on it. My priest had a ritual that they thought would fix this. And they, they see you pause and, and, you know, after reading that, not sure what to say. And uh, they take the paper back and they write a little bit more. We tried it before, but well, but how would they think about this person? They, they tr- we tried it before, but a knight stopped us. Uh, stopped us. <laughs> this is Mallory laughing, not Alton. <laughs> Fair. <sighs> okay. Sorry, I'm taking a pause. Sorry. Go for it. Feel free to ask lore questions. I am happy to give you some stuff. I'm trying to think of what Alton would genuinely ask in this moment, you know? Like, with the information that he has, what would he ask? Yeah. I imagine that he would say, okay. Okay. I am from Cirque. Do they react to that at all? Does she react to that at all? They sort of cock their head a little bit. Like, they're not sure what they mean, but that what you mean, but then they, they're letting you continue. They're not interrupting. Okay. I have seen other people who looked like you before. They stand up a little bit more upright, and they pull the paper back from you and uh, grab the, the and take the pen and write, and they say, where? It was beneath, right? What? Beneath the church. I, I'm trying to remember where. <laughs> it was, it was, so, yeah, so. Um, it was within the church, but was it, like, underground? It was underground, so Cirque is called Cirque because it is the city on the circle. Uh, the circle is a large circular structure. It's basically a wall with a dome on top that the Congress Monastery is built up against. So the city that you're in was in that circle. So if, if you lived in the city on the circle, that that city was that underground city was the circle. OK, I say that, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I would explain it in a way that hopefully. OK, so I explain um, what would I say. I'm from Cirque. I have seen creatures, people. Sorry. Oh, that, oh, they they visibly react to you correcting that yourself with that. That look like you. I've seen people that look like you beneath the church of where I'm from. They nod slowly in response to that. Is that where you are from? Um, they sort of give like a a like a a, a shake of the like this this sort of gesture with their head that's like kind of a shake and kind of a no- like they're not sure exactly you know like oh is that really where I'm from kind of face and they um they write on the paper again and they write the word uh bregatone I don't know what that means <laughs> I don't know if I'm supposed to I don't know if Alt would Alton know what that means would uh, that resonate anything in Alton or work ooh uh ooh actually ooh uh, There's more than one person here. I, you can roll me a history check. Okay. You have disadvantage. Fair. Wark does not have disadvantage. Oh, I rolled a critical twenty and then a seven. <laughs> but I add nothing, so seven. Mallory, you know who else rolled a critical twenty? Wark. <laughs> Wark rolled a critical twenty. Fuck yeah, Wark. Uh, Wark looks, um, between the two of you, like, you, you look, when they say, when you see Bregatone, you have this moment of, like, oh, actually, oh, <laughs> like, like, I got a 20? Oh, no, I actually got a 7. Um, and then you look <laughs> towards Wark, and he just looks from the paper straight to them and says, do you mean, like, Brega? And the figure, the, the creature, once again sort of cocks their head to the side like they're not entirely sure what he means uh but then shrugs a little bit like maybe maybe that's it's the same thing i don't know 
Maureen was the name, right? Maureen, yes. Okay, cool. Alton turns and says, Maureen, what do you want? Um, she pauses for a long time. <laughs> and then she takes the, uh, she, she takes the quill again and writes on the paper and turns it towards you. And you see, uh, written out, I don't want any of us to be like this anymore. How do we do that? Making sure that I use the word we. She, um, she gestures on the paper where before she had mentioned uh, a ritual. She points at that. Then she gestures, she, she reaches up sort of towards her neck, uh, but then sort of pauses as she grasps at something that's not there. And then she, um, looks just sort of like, ugh. Oh, gosh. Um, and then looks around between the two of you. So you see her jaw start to move as if she's trying to talk to you. And then ugh, frustration. I can't. Um, I can't talk. Uh, and then she looks between the two of you and she notices uh, the light uh, coming from Wark's hand, um, the sort of script on his on his gloves. Uh, she points at the script on his gloves and jabs her bony finger at is at that script. Does work react to this in any way? Sorry, I was gonna let the magic, the magical boy, <laughs> handle um, this Wor one. Work says you you need something to perform your rituals, and uh, the other person nods. Arcane focus of some sort, and they they nod again. Is it something that we can make? And uh, they shake their head, uh, and and then they they take the the paper. Actually, do you, do you ask anything at this point? I don't think so. Okay. I think I'm waiting to see. Like, I imagine that Alton is closely observing this interaction. They start writing again, and uh, they say um, on the paper, what exactly do they say? Uh, I feel like people would tend towards brevity, <laughs> you know, in situations like this. Mm hmm When you're actually having to write out the words. So they probably write something along the lines of... We took, we took what we would need from the church. She took what I had. Yeah, she took what I had. That, that's all that's written. That's it? That's all that she wrote. She is the person who was holding you captive? Maureen nods her head. What did she take? She, ge Maureen gestures towards, sort of towards her neck, um, maybe indicating like a necklace, and then points at... Warks gloves, an arcane focus of some sort, and uh, she nods her head. Alton gives a wry smile <laughs> and <laughs> says, we should be able to get that back. She nods her head again, and then she also, then she points at the sentence um, that she had written before, which was, uh, we got it, f we got what we needed from the church, or something along those lines. I don't have this pre-written, I'm figuring it out on the spot, mm -hmm. uh, so sue me. But she points towards that and then she she starts writing another sentence and it says um, either would work. Either would work and that we could find another. And she, uh, she nods her head. OK, that might be easier. Um, and she gestures. She points at the word uh, church and the word she and then just sort of does the little balancing thing with her hands uh, like either either one. Gotcha. What, what she has or what the church has, either one works. Alton says, oh, I stole some things from the church. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember if it was a pendant or what I stole, but I know I stole something from the church that I just wanted to have. Oh, last remember? episode? No, last arc. Oh, you stole a book that you gave to uh, Hosalda. But I also stole something just for funsies. Did you really? I did, because I remember you, sp you were describing things, and I feel like you described something that you had created specifically based off of my character from another uh, thing that I told you about, Aria. It was like a pendant or something. Oh my God, you're totally right. And I stole that shit too, just for funsies. Uh, show that to her, I guess. Do you have it on you? I don't think so. I mean, I imagine it would be with me in this room with my stuff, but I don't think I'd carry it everywhere. Like I'm not religious or Alton's not religious. 
how, how about we uh we have you hop do you, are you gonna hop back in the, let's just have you hop back in the room real quick and grab it if you want to say that you do that then we'll like edit that in okay cool for sure i'll be like oh hold on and just run back to the room i guess trying desperately not to wake danny okay um so you sort of hop through works uh or i guess you just slowly move open the window to your room um hop inside uh grab the thing uh you hear danny just kind of like Uh, Even and his snores are <laughs> of needing of protection. Yes, uh, and you you grab this um, this little trinket that you had stolen, uh, and you bring it out. And yeah, if I if I had if it was, do you remember this though? I'm not making this up. I I do remember what you're I do remember what you're talking about, and like because I remember you specifically describing something, and me in my head, Mallory thinking, oh, time made something based off of Aria and like the forest and light and that kind of magic and so in my head Alton took that for no particular reason other than he just wanted to steal it that is so good because that is that works very perfectly for this purpose thinking ahead (laughs) wow Uh, I just like the magic of like like this story note that like that I literally forgot even happened uh (laughs) that's so good um yeah so you you run into into your room um, grab this thing and then run back, hop out the window silently and uh, walk over and present it to them. They, they look at it in your hands and they nod excitedly. Cool. I, I hand it over without, hesi- without hesitation. They take it um, in their hand and they look from, from you to work. It's hard. It's hard to, it, it's hard to read a skeleton. It's hard to read something that doesn't have a, uh, it doesn't have muscle. It doesn't have bone. It doesn't have skin. Once again, it doesn't have bone. Um, it doesn't have skin. It doesn't have uh, lips or eyes. It has no way for you to detect a smile. And yet, something in you tells you that this that that Maureen, this skeletal being standing in front of you, is looking at you with kind eyes and a smiling face. And I think that's where we're gonna end today. <laughs> I'm so excited and I listeners I'm sorry if I don't remember exactly I just remember specifically you were you describing an item that we had talked about you were gonna make a religion or God or something based off of this character that I had made for something else and you described it when you were describing everything that was in the library and I was like I'm gonna take it Yes. So, uh, so listeners, um, during Mallory's arc, there were loads of opportunities for Mallory to uh, run into information about gods that were not Lumen, who is like one of the only gods that we have ever mentioned in this freaking show. Um, and uh, this was one of them. This this particular thing was one of the um, artifacts of a god who is not Lumen. Um, and, uh, and this, this character, Maureen, uh, recognizes that. So, uh, yeah, um, I think we're gonna, uh, end there. Uh, Mal, do you have anything you want to say? Anything you want to plug? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> Ty, do you have anything that you want to plug? Uh, I don't have anything I want to plug. Um, I just want to say thanks real quick to the Scavengers Network for having us on. And, uh... Boy, I think that's it. It, The problem with recording literally months in advance is that uh, I don't know what I would want to share with you folks, except, hey, have a good day. And with that, I think we're going to pitter-patter on out of here. Let's pitter-party out. No, pitter-patter. Oh, fuck it. Pitter-party. Let's pitter-party out. (laughs) Pitter-party. Dang it. (laughs) I messed up the outro. Okay, bye. Bye. I always want to say bye at the end. I think it's polite. I think it's polite, yeah, you're right. Thanks to the Joy Drops for the use of Not Drunk as our intro and outro music. Find them at thejoydrops.com. You can find us at sidecharacterquest.com, at SCQ Podcast on Twitter, or by email at sidecharacterquest at gmail.com. The Scavengers Network. Creator-driven. Community-focused. Treasured content.
this is going to get cut and put in the bloopers. Boy, I am so like, I just don't know what you're going to do. I'm, <laughs> I'm so I am so like interested. Like I you might do something like as far as I know, you're going to do something just like very like small. You just knew like the immediate thing that you were going to do. Or maybe you're going to just like really. Big. I don't know. I just have no idea. Hey, Ty, All I right. can't lie to you. I don't really know what I'm going to do. It's going to depend <sighs> on how these first couple minutes go. I know. Oh, gosh. Oh, boy. OK. 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 <laughs> Um, also, a uh, reminder, as per usual, um, if uh, if you need a moment to, like, stop and think about things, feel free and we'll edit out the blank space. Sure, you will. <laughs> I will. You'll edit out most of the. I'm, I'm, I'm just yeah. teasing you. I know there, that you edit out so many pauses that I do. Yeah, there are occasionally times when I, I do, like, rather than editing out 30 seconds, I'll edit out, like, 25 seconds. Because that five seconds feels like an eternity and like for that particular moment, it like needs there needs to be a pause. Yeah, um, like I feel like the pauses add a lot in certain moments. Mm-hmm. Like people have to think before or people should think before they speak. <laughs> so yeah. it makes sense sometimes. But sometimes it's just me not knowing what to do. That's fine. Um, I have uh, a little behind the scenes knowledge. Um, I have a specific track that I'll, I'll use for that. That's just called Eli Reverb because he was the first person to do that. Um, and I've just copied, you know, I just reuse the same uh, uh, recording template every time. Um, how anyway, special. How special. We're going to cut out that little bit and shove it at the bloopers at the end. <laughs> Alton is standing uh how do I want to phrase this? I was going to let you just I knew that you would have a dramatic intro, so I was just going <laughs> to sit here silently. Yeah. I don't have anything written, so I'm just like uh, this is why this is why it's good that I'm, I'm re- I reminded you that we can cut things because I can also cut my own pauses while I think of stuff. Uh, they they appeared to be talking to one another. You couldn't hear that. <laughs> you can hear that, drove, though, right? Drove by. It was Somebody so went loud. speeding by and they're overly (laughs) loud car and or motorcycle hands up like not non as non-threatening as i can be essentially oh sorry i'll (laughs) say that one more time my roommate just got back so we have like there's an alarm system at this house that we're staying in and it beeps (laughs) when the door opens that sounded like it was like right next to me yes it's a very very loud beep oh my god (laughs) I'm sorry. I didn't know what time they were getting back or I would have warned you. Like, I thought it was like a fire alarm, but like a new no. one because I've heard the fire alarm in my house before. My bad. Oh, I'm Christ. sorry. I didn't mean to do you a startle. I will say that one more time. <laughs> yes, please. Um, Noice. Let's do that. <laughs> good idea. It was almost it was good, almost idea, good except for the, the st- 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 stutter. <laughs> I stutter so I don't much know in this when I developed show. this. I feel like I developed a stutter pretty late in life and I'm trying mm. to get rid of it as an adult and it's awful. Now I meander um. back oh? with my oh. Coke Zero and some ice. It's great. Hell yeah. Great adventure I'm having now. I've made some <laughs> twists and turns though <laughs> along the way. I probably shouldn't shoot out my voice off podcast. <laughs> All right. All right. All right. Getting back on here. Rejoining my good friend. Hello. Hello. How are you doing? You know, I'm pretty good. I got another glass of wine. I went downstairs. My roommate's back from the store. She brought some more wine at the store. Fuck yeah. Like a champ. Like a champ. Uh, uh, if you and uh, if you and uh, Eli, or just you, fuck Eli. I realize it's probably confusing to longtime listeners that know that I'm married to Eli. Why I'm talking about living with a roommate? <laughs> I'm just not oh, going to explain. Oh, oh, that, that could be so distressing. <laughs> no, listeners, Eli and I are still happily married. I have to travel for my job. Yes, accurate. I work in the. Totally non-glamorous world of... T- oh, let me try that one more time. The wine hit hard. TV <laughs> and film production. Yes. And it often uh, rich for, requires travel and your soul. 
I feel like I've never really talked about my job, so my shameless plug now that we're talking about it is everyone should go see Peanut Butter Falcon. It's definitely going to be out of theaters by the time this airs. <laughs> but look for, on it on your, service. look for it on your streaming service. We'll probably be on like Amazon Prime or something. It's the only thing I've ever worked on that I'm proud of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. I believe that, which makes me sad. Yeah. Uh. Like, I know, I... The thing I'm working on now will hopefully be pretty cool, but it's just oh, I'm excited. a fucking train wreck. But whatever. you know, one of these days we need to just do a uh, a marathon of Mallory projects. <laughs> <laughs> it's gonna be a lot of Hallmark movies. Oh, oh, I am I am pumped for that. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, I I've, I've I never watched a Hallmark a list. movie before, but like I feel like I would enjoy. You know exactly what it's about. <laughs> Gotcha. Um, one second. I'm going to try re-recording that Yelp <laughs> by turning down my gain. Oh! 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 Turn that back up. <laughs> <laughs> Listeners, if Ty doesn't keep that all in, it was a delightful just grouping of all, <laughs> like not tons, but a couple of pretty good Yelps. <laughs> Thank you. Um, don't want anyone to find these here. Sorry, I hit all of my dice when I said that, so I'm going to gotcha. say it one more time. <laughs> I don't want any of us to be like this anymore. I paused because I didn't know if that was going to be your dramatic episode ending. I, but if it's am, not going to be, then I, I have more questions. I, I feel like this is a good I feel like this is a good time for that, but I also like I feel like that's a good ending, but I don't feel like that's a good beginning of another episode. Right. You know what I mean? No, I feel you. Yeah. OK, we can keep going. I just yeah. I was pausing because I didn't I, I wanted to give enough. I appreciate you space in case you wanted to end it there. Well, uh, well I need to get into the voice. Um, Hello. <laughs> hello. My name's Wark. 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 I remember when did I ever tell you the story of how I got this character voice? Uh, <laughs> why don't I remember Brega or why do I remember Brega? Uh, Brega is the word that the dwarves use for Mother Nature. OK, cool. Which is why Wark knew what it was. Gotcha. Yeah. I am. Um, yes. Cool. Um, what else? Uh. Is that what you thought was going to happen? Did you think that Mallory slash Alton was going to free the skeleton? This is pretty close to what I expected to happen. Um, I figured. I was worried that, th well, I wasn't worried, but I, I knew there was a possibility that things could go fucking insane. Like things could have gone, like there were so many ways you could take this. This is what I expected to happen. But like, I was prepared for the possibility that this was going to go real off the rails. Uh, 